Wow, there's so much on the sonar. Oh boy, that might, that might be a boat, guys. I'm that gonna be honest, that, that looks like a boat. That looks like yeah, a boat. That yeah, looks like that's a boat. awesome. Coming up on some wreckage here. Wow. So what do we know about the Udachi? In, it was involved in the first naval battle of Guadalcanal in November of uh, 42. She'd been partially abandoned at the time and was one of the kind of drifting ships left on Iron Bottom Sound the morning after the battle. So this is the first wreck that we have not conducted a full Norbit survey, so we're more or less flying a little bit blind. Better to err on the side of caution in this type of situation. Yeah, I think it would be best if we can kind of get ourselves oriented, you know, find bow, yeah. find stern. So someone's asking about the giant hunk of mangled mess. Was that we boat or rock? Looking or? at that, we're thinking that was what was left of the stern. Oh, okay. Uh, when she was sunk by shell fire from the cruiser Portland, uh, one of her shells apparently detonated one of the aft magazines, so that would explain the mangled nature of it. No, I, I thought I read that there was an attempt by the Japanese to sink it too after it was abandoned. Oh. Three torpedoes, but, yeah. but didn't sink it. No, I don't it know if it, if they, credited to Portland's gunfire, right. so that would have been an 8-inch projectile. What are we looking at here, these torpedoes? Well, we just passed uh, one of her torpedo launchers. The torpedo launchers. It was, uh, it was a quad launcher, meaning it had four tor tubes attached to it. We did not note any torpedoes in them. There's, like, nothing really left intact. <laughs> yeah, that's been a long that's topic amazing. amongst some of my friends and I. Based on what we've seen on... Japanese wrecks, British wrecks, and U.S. wrecks. It looks like there may be like something to do with the alloys and things used. Uh, well, this is where I marked the, the Japanese wrecks the, tend the to that I've seen. Most of them yeah. look kind of more this deteriorated. This is basically the end of the boat. Okay, so uh, this appears to be the tip of the boat. I don't know if we're thinking it's the bow or the stern no. yet. There's nothing else on sonar. I think we're coming up on the bow. Is that potentially a gun with the mount? It could be. It does kind of like it's fallen backwards yeah, back, a little backwards bit. Backwards yeah. into it, yeah. I don't, I don't know that that's a gun. I, yeah, I mean, I don't either. Yeah. What's all this stringy stuff? That's so crazy to yeah. me. It's like, yeah. what are they? It almost looks like voice tubing. It's like uh, brass pipes that would go to various compartments and speak it to them and you could hear them. Whoa. John says there were two AA positions just forward of the bridge and two more just above and aft of the forward torpedo mount. Looks like this deck here is kind of blown up. It looks like we're looking at like a deck that has space. been blown up and over, kind of folded up. Right. And now, you made the comment that the firing from the Portland set off Look, the those magazine. Cables are in yeah. Cableways. So maybe we were at the, but that's just kind of a yeah. weird. Yeah. yeah, so we see cableways right there. The, the amount of cabling is yeah. like really a lot more than on the Americans. Yeah. Yeah. There's also nothing growing on this yeah, wreck. Yeah, very together. Yeah. So yeah. different. Observation. Kind of curious to get back to the other end of the ship mm -hmm. now to see if, if that was in fact the bow, because this looks like it would. It was kind of like blown up and over. And I'm kind of wondering if this could possibly be a gun mount here that fell over. Yeah, I, th I think well, what we saw on, on the side did indeed look like a gun mount. We're looking for something that's 12.7 uh, centimeters. I think the measurement with the that laser on, on does that does, that does is, compa is compatible with the barrel, I think. Uh, and so if the gun yeah. has one barrel, it's probably the number two mount at the stern, the Type B mount for the 127 millimeter gun. That's uh, Jonathan's comment. And then it looks like, well, this wreck is just demolished. It's crazy to see the contrast from yesterday. I think that's yet. like the bridge. Yeah, so, I see yeah. windows. Yeah. 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 And it uh, looks like, the, are those the tubes you were talking about, people talking to? Talking yeah, to, yeah. 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 It yeah. looks like yeah. they've fallen over a little bit from yeah. the illustration that's in Ballard's book. You look like, it looks like you got uh, possibly the engine order telegraph here. <gasps> oh, yeah. Oh, ooh, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> are those those numbers that we can see on the yeah. dial? Yeah. <gasps> Very clearly. You kind of looks like the binnacle right here. Yeah. It's part of the nav, it's where you would have the ship's compass. Then you got this, the voice tubes, or speaking tubes, whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. so that you could communicate to other parts of the ship. Do we have wow. any sense of what the numbered thing would be? Could that be yeah. a Polaris, maybe? Mm -hmm. Noticeable more deterioration compared to what, we, what they saw in 92. Wow. 
that half round uh, mount looking object could even maybe be a binnacle mount? A, bi a binnacle mount. A binnacle mount? Yeah, it could be. <gasps> that looks like one of the stools, maybe. Oh my god. You know, I think this is like the first uh, real detailed kind of thing we've been able to see inside, inside a bridge. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. it's one, one, of the, one of the upsides of uh, all the degradation in a sense. Yeah. So can you give our viewers some context? Where are we looking on, on the ship? The bridge area. The bridge. And is it's on its side then? Yeah, it's been well, it's blown, blown over, yeah. blown apart. Oh, wow. So the past few days we've been seeing what Japanese ordnance did to American ships. Now we're seeing what American ordnance did to a Japanese ship. And again, it just kind of highlights the ferocity of the battles. Frank, do you know the, the story of the sinking? The morning after the battle, Iron Bottom Sound was kind of uh, filled with some of the wounded ships from the night's previous battle. The Japanese were withdrawing because uh, daylight meant uh, that U.S. aircraft are going to kind of dominate the skies, so they were trying to get as far north as they could out of range, and that meant leaving some of their damaged ships behind. Yodachi was one of those, and um, one of the ships that Yodachi had damaged was uh, the heavy cruiser Portland, and um, they came across the Yodachi, and uh, the gunnery officer uh, used the 8-inch gun turrets on the Portland and began opening fire and scored hits that uh, detonated her aft magazine. Oh, it's that's like the, the turret. The, the turret right There's here. the gun turret oh. right there. And the guns look in the same configuration that Chuck's uh, drawing shows, so, yeah. It's also boys, collapsed to yeah. port. Look at that corrosion and collapse. Oh, my God. And that should be the thickest plating on the turret, the armor. Yeah. Wow, and it's all gone. And what are we getting a close-up on now? This is the ship's forward gun mount. The forward gun mount. Wow. So it looks like it's collapsed over to the side now. So we're looking at the top of it then? Is that what you're this, saying? Uh, this is a side. The top would have been the top. The, this is, no, this is a side. And the, you see the two guns, the two barrels coming yeah. out. Oh, okay. And, and there's the top. Yeah. Up, up here. Yep. Framed. But the remarkable thing is this this gun mount, the turret, had the thickest armor on the ship. Yeah. Pretty yeah muffled it's and, and look at it. I mean, just eating away. Oh. 